Welcome to the studio. I have a confession. I have been obsessed recently with the idea of 3D printing scale models and miniatures and then filming them in some pretty fun and unique ways. Inspired, I think, a lot by Disney's Industrial Light and Magic series, which, by the way, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Do yourself a huge favor. It's pretty awesome. Now, with this in mind, a couple of months ago, I 3D printed a Star Destroyer and I made a video on it. But then today, I was playing around with filming it and I wanted to show you exactly how I did it. And in fact, I'd love to see YouTube filled with way more of this type of content. Now, before we get too far, there are some huge reasons for my madness here. I'm actually 3D printing an even larger Star Destroyer right now, like four plus feet larger, and I wanted to be able to get some sweet shots of it when it's complete. So before I finish the larger one, I figured it would be a good idea to maybe film the smaller one just to see what kind of shots I can get. If you want to go check out the printing of the Star Destroyer, I'll have links in the description, or you can just go to the channel and check it out. It's a pretty fun video. Oh, and you might want to hit that subscribe button because we are also going to be 3D printing a life-sized TIE Fighter. Yep, you heard that right, a life-sized TIE Fighter. One that I can actually like climb into that has buttons and lights and sounds, everything. In fact, I just unloaded nearly 3,000 pounds of filament for the TIE Fighter project just a few days ago and we'll be filming the whole process. You won't want to miss it. This is gonna be absolutely epic. So seriously, hit the like on this video, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you ring that bell and your alerts are on. It's gonna be amazing, seriously. Okay, back to filming the model. Now, before I can film this smaller Star Destroyer, I have to be able to position it for the camera. And I wanted to make sure it's as easy and versatile as possible to mount and to adjust as needed. Mostly so I can repeat the process with a li like as little staging as possible and as little teardown as possible. Here in the studio, a lot of things are quarter 20 threads. Tripods, mics, cameras, mounts, a lot of stuff here is quarter 20. And since we 3D print, we already know how to use heat set inserts. And I figured the easiest way to do this was to order some quarter 20 heat set inserts off of Amazon and use these to position the model for filming. Normally there's an opening in the print that matches the size of the insert when it's designed for them. But because this is custom, I just used my Dremel and I opened up a hole just a little bit smaller than the size of the insert. And just like any heat set inserts, they are pretty easy to install. Just a little heat from the soldering iron and some downward pressure and they slide right in. Now once it cools and the plastic sets, we can simply attach them to anything that uses quarter 20 threads and position it for filming. This makes it so much nicer to simply position the model and then we can move lighting and cameras around to get the shot that we want. And of course, making minor adjustments to the model's position is just as easy too. Okay, now to the filming. There are a thousand ways to get this shot, but this is what I used and how I did it. I'm using a Sony ZV-E10 with a Tamron 17-28 f2.8 lens. Now there are far better lenses out there for this, but since I'm just getting started and I'm not really sure what kind of lens I want for future shots, I'm totally open for suggestions, but this is what I'm using for today. In fact, leave some comments below on lenses you'd suggest for these scale model shots. Um, I'd like to see what you recommend. Fun fact, this Tamron 17 to 28 lens is the one I got from Sarah Dietschy. It was used in a ton of her YouTube videos and I'm stoked that it gets to continue making fun content over here on my channel now. And I'll have links to Sarah on the screen in the description as well. Yeah, go give her a subscribe. I set the ISO to 1000, f-stop to 16, and the shutter speed to 30. I know I can drop the shutter speed way lower and slow things down, but I'll definitely play with that on the next shots. The key is to have all or as much of the larger model in focus as possible. It gives it that larger than life feeling, and I could have went with a higher f-stop, but I didn't want to move the lighting around, so that's what that's where we're at. As for lighting, I used an Amaran 150C at about 5500 Kelvin, and it's at about 85% brightness, and it uses a 32-inch diffuser. And I'd say it's about, oh, two feet away from the model. I have an on-camera light just to add a little extra to the shot, but it's totally not necessary. And the rest of the studio lights are off because I wanted it to be black in the background um, so that uh, I didn't have to take down the shadows too much in post. Now, as for motion, I'm using a stabilized top rig S60 at about 20% speed, and that's mounted on a Manfrotto tripod uh, with a fluid head for those clean minor adjustments. This combination gives me that super smooth motion uh, that we could easily get in post, but since I have a pretty nice slider, um, that's just what we're gonna use to test, and I think it worked out pretty good. Now, for fine-tuning the height of the model to the camera, get this, this 
flexi spot sit stand desk is absolutely sick it gives me all of the fine control to get everything just perfect in relation to the camera um, it's already made filming so much easier here in the studios i can't even imagine going back to the other bench and in fact flexi spot just sent over another sit stand desk and chair as well um, over to us to help us kit out our other studio um, it's pretty cool of them now it's just a matter of hitting record here on the stream deck to get the shot then everything is sent directly from my cameras to my network attached storage in 4k where i just pull it up on my macbook pro in final cut pro after i drop the clip into the timeline all it needed was to have the highlights bumped up a little the shadows taken down and then a little mask keyframed around the model of course there are other ways to do this and i do have a green screen right here in the studio and I could have just pulled that down and then keyed it out but again I'm just testing and playing around a little just to see how well this process works for our next videos. There are a ton of ways to get this same shot and in fact I'd love to hear how you would have done it if you know put it in the comments below I'd like to read it. Now the last thing I did before I exported it was a little sharpening and then I cooled the shot down by pulling some of the warm and yellow tones out and here it is exported. I think what I really like about this is that we get to 3D print anything that we want and then we get to film it any way that we want. It's the creativity and the unlimited potential to just create what we want by 3D printing it and then filming it. Like seriously, 3D printing is just awesome. Honestly, I really think it turned out pretty freaking amazing uh, for a 3D print with no post-processing at all. And now that this worked, I can't wait to finish the larger Star Destroyer and then I'll get some shots of that, so stay tuned for a video on that. Now, what else do you think we should print and film? I think I'd love to do some more miniatures or some action figures. Uh, maybe get another lens for those, but uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below on what you think we should film next. Now, if you want to learn how I printed this Star Destroyer, watch the video right here. And let me give a huge thank you to our Patreon and YouTube members. I couldn't do this without you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you on the next one. Pretty awesome.